Hi, you're listening to the My Body, My Story podcast. So I, you know, I think the very, the most important thing is to find out, again, find out who they are. Um, you know, what I've taught my my kids is to that they need to know who they are first and foremost. So then they are not influenced by anyone else, and um, yeah, and so they live their life their own way. This is the 45045 chapter, where we celebrate rule breakers and role models, the women who inspire us to live life our way and to show their sensuality, beauty, soul and true essence. Here we talk about what it's like to be 45 plus, adjusting to the changes that come with time, and we listen to the stories of our participants. If you have an interesting story to share, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us on info at alexandrawalker.com and that's Alexandra spelled with a K-S or visit our website alexandrawalker.com. Hello everyone and welcome to My Body, My Story project and today we're having Xenia and while she's sitting in the makeup chair, and having her makeup done, I'll be asking her a few questions. Hi, Zinia. Hi. And let's start and tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so um, I'm 55 years old. I have um, two sons. One is 22 and the other is 31. Um, I was born in Manila, Philippines. I left when I was nine. We lived in Rabaul for six years because my parents were contract teachers there. Um, and Where did you go? Um, Rabaul, Papua New Guinea. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you lived there nine years? Six years. Six years. Six mm-hmm. years. And so that was um, until 1982. And in 1982, we came here to Sydney, Australia. And I've been here since then. <laughs> wow, that's a yeah. long time. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are you most passionate about? Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm most passionate about. You know, there's a word called deconditioning. It's deconditioning myself of all the rules and and obligations and beliefs and values that really don't belong to me. So it's basically um, making sure that I live my life my own way. Mm. Um, So that's why at the moment I'm currently working on developing workshops uh, for our business so I can pass on whatever skills and processes I've learned to help people do the same thing for themselves if they want to. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So yeah. what is this business name and, you know... Oh, well, the business name is The Evolving Bee. Mm-hmm. And we're currently... Um, uh, we're, we're just um, at the start of the business, mm-hmm. so um, doing the website and everything like that. But, yeah, hoping to launch it um, mid-July, like mm-hmm. the financial year, the beginning of the financial year. Okay, perfect. And so what's the main idea of that business? Oh, the main idea of the business is to basically, so it's called the evolving being um, because we are all evolving. As in there's no, there's no such thing as finding an end, an end goal in, mm-hmm. in life kind of thing. And we're constantly changing. And so it's um, teaching people how to firstly, Mm-hmm. get to know who they are as in how they live their life and how they do things and to really make sure that that is how they want to do their life and mm-hmm. it's not because oh their parents wanted them to be this way or or they think uh, this is how society wants yeah. them to be so it's it's really teaching people to really live their life yeah that's pretty much that's really what it nice is. one yeah yeah so Everyone knows that with age we change, mm-hmm. but what positive changes have you experienced so far? Um, I think one word, and it's um, it's wisdom, um, <laughs> because um, uh, you know, with being here on Earth for fifty-five years, you've I've come to know a lot, 
and as well as experiencing a lot. So, you know, that, that is what wis- where wisdom comes from because you've got to know about something first until, and until you actually um, get to live it, then it, it, it's not a felt sense in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and what, what does it give you? Wisdom. Oh, so it, it um, in some ways it gives me, uh, it's like the hindsight. So, you know, if something challenging occurs in my life now, mm-hmm. I have the, I have the, the insight uh, and as to what to do, mm-hmm. like how to, how to go about, um, you know, what, what choices to make mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so you're more confident in your yeah. choices and the way you solve or approach yeah. some yeah, uh, that's right. issues or problems. Or, yeah. And what is the biggest challenge at the moment for you? Uh, that's, um, that's menopause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite word. <laughs> Our favorite word. But not a lot of people actually want to talk about it. And I've found that even... Um, GPs, it's like you go to a GP and they say, oh, you know, it's, that's it. You know, that's what life's all about. And, yeah. and it's Impressive. almost like there's a full stop. Well, that's it. You know, you've got to live it like that. And um, I actually have gone to so many different um, health providers. I even went to an Ayurvedic doctor and she actually gave me a, a really fantastic explanation of what it's like to be menopausal. And that's, um, she said, it's like losing your parents as a child because, you know, when you're a child, you're pa- you, you rely on your parents to protect you, to mm. feed you, to shelter you and all these things. Um, and if you lose it, it's like, oh, you know, what now? Mm. And so she said, that's basically... It's the same. It's like having to live your life without your parents. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God. Okay, this is a positive view. <laughs> so what, what shall we do about it according to her? <laughs> uh, well, at the, I, oh, I've done so many researches into how, how to alleviate the symptoms. And yeah. I think it's, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's... it's um, what do you call it? It's an individual choice mm. because some women, they want to go through HRT, some want to go natural. So I think it's an individual choice. Yeah. And I think, you know, even women, women need to talk about it. It's like, it's not a taboo subject. Yeah. I think it's got to be really, I think it's got to be spoken about. So, yeah. yeah. I agree completely. Yeah. So let's move to more pleasant things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is your greatest accomplishment so far? <laughs> uh, okay. I think my greatest accomplishment is raising my two boys mm-hmm. to like really know who they are and to live their life in their own terms so that, you know, they're not, it's like, you know, they're not, um, what do you call it, influenced by society, mm-hmm. they're not influenced by whoever. And sometimes, you know, even I... I sometimes I suggest something and um, they they don't really want to hear about it. They just want to do it <laughs> in their own way. And I just need to get out of their way, yeah. basically, and live their own life. And but it's yeah. hard, I know. <laughs> I know yeah. how hard it is uh, <laughs> to stop yourself. <laughs> I know. And it's, sometimes I say, you know, I kind of, I say, at least listen to me because I've lived this life and you know and and I'm just suggesting and it's up to you to take it up listen to it and take it up so yeah (laughs) so um, let's think of uh, imagine that you could travel in time and you could go back uh, and meet your 30 year old self Mm -hmm. Uh, what advice would you give her oh I would tell her that she is a strong, courageous and badass woman and that she deserves to be loved as she loves. Because, you know, all my life I had this uh, 
you know, because of being told by parents and, 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 and relatives that I'm a very hard headed person or strong willed or stubborn. Um, and I used to view it as something negative about mm -hmm. myself, but now it's like, you know, I am so proud that I am strong willed because I, it, it has made me live my life my own way. And yeah, so that's, that's my thing. Live your life. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's a really nice one. Yeah. And what advice would you give younger women who will eventually undergo the age changes yeah. and reach the age we are now? <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I think the, very, the most important thing is to find out, again, find out who they are. Um, you know, what I've taught my, my kids is to, that they need to know who they are mm -hmm. first and foremost. So then... They are not influenced by anyone else, and um, yeah, and so they live their life their own way. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the most important thing. I yeah. think, yeah. It's, it's for me. It sounds like a theme of this interview, is that like Frank, <laughs> Frank Sinatra song. I did it my way. Yeah, I did it my way. That's it. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, if we would talk about uh, body image and uh, the idea of a perfect body image, where do you think this idea comes from and what is it for you, your perfect body? Uh, I think social media has a lot to do with, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, influencing women as to what a perfect body image is. Um, which I don't think is quite realistic because we all have different metabolisms mm -hmm. and, and we age and our body will do what, you know, what it needs to do. So I think for me, if you're going to ask about perfect body image, um, I think, I don't, I don't know, whatever body you have when you eat healthily mm -hmm. and when I say eat healthily, you're not depriving yourself of food. You really love eating. Um, and whatever, whatever type of body that takes you, I think that's, that's where mm. your perfect body is. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And what does it mean to you, feeling good and looking good? What comes first for you? Oh, definitely um, feeling good. Mm -hmm. I think you have to feel good inside first before you even look good because, you know, um, you know I, can, I can wear a designer clothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I don't look good. Sorry, if I don't feel good inside of me, someone else is wearing the same clothes, yeah. but they feel really good about themselves, they will it will look so much better on them than mm -hmm. me. So you, yeah, feeling good is the most important thing. And what makes you feel the most beautiful? Oh, I have this thing. So I feel the most beautiful when I'm in a state of full acceptance of who I am oh. and where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can think. relate. Yeah. yeah. I have like tears coming. <laughs> 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 and my last question is, uh, do you have any favorite quote about being a woman? Yes, uh, my favorite quote is, um, and I, I don't know who said it, I just saw it somewhere, um, but it's, um, I am woman, I bend, I don't break. Yeah, a great one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Zinia. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and for joining our project. I Thanks. hope you will enjoy the rest of the day and uh, uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. If you have an interesting story to share, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us on info at alexandrawalker.com and that's Alexandra spelled with a K-S or visit our website alexandrawalker.com.